What is happening and welcome to another Four Wheel Drive Talk episode. And friends, well, if you are on the fence with a AGM versus a lithium battery, I promise you this is going to be a video that you're going to want to tune in. You see, a few weeks ago, uh, we released a video on the top accessories and modifications that I have done to my Turtleback Expedition trailer. And one of them you may recall is I moved from AGM batteries to 100 amp hour AGM batteries to, to 100 amp hour lithium batteries. Now this led to kind of a cascade of questions from you folks on AGM versus lithium, AGM versus lithium. And we've, we've, see, I've had videos in the past that got the sort of reaction where we saw a lot of questions that came in from you guys with regards to, well, okay, I currently have AGMs or I have an AGM battery. I'm thinking about going lithium. You, know, what are the benefits of this? And one thing I do want to point out here, guys, I'm no battery expert. So I'm going to do my best here and I'm going to give you a, give you a high level overview of some of the differences between an AGM. Some of the things that from my personal standpoint are the things that made motivated me to move from AGMs over to lithium. Now, if you want more of a tactical chemical composition of a AGM versus lithium, there are some other uh, people on YouTube that know this topic a heck of a lot more. It can give you much more depth. So uh, perhaps after watching this video and you want a little bit more insight, a little bit more of that good old fashioned knowledge, I would recommend going to YouTube and letting YouTube do the work from there and or connect you with some people that can get you a little bit more technical uh, background on batteries or the composition of these things. All right, friends, and before we dive into all this fun here, look, we put these videos together so therefore you can stay informed or in this case, make better educated decisions on hell, whether an AGM battery is good for you or a lithium battery is the best option for you. And if, of course, if you find some value with that, you'd be doing us a big favor by crushing the hell out of that like button down below because hey, it really does help with the whole YouTube algorithm. That said, my friends, pull up a seat and let's go. Well, seeing that I started off with AGM batteries in my turtle bank, let's start with AGM batteries. Let's take a look at some of the benefits with AGM batteries. First of all, you know, these have a long list of benefits that might make them a wise choice for an overlanding rig. So for starters, hell, they're cheap, far cheaper than lithium batteries. So if you're on a budget, AGMs are going to be the way to go. Now, secondly, AGM batteries are tried and tested technology that hell has been proven and highly reliable for camping and overlanding situations. And let me clarify, you know, look, I'm not saying that lithium batteries aren't well tested and reliable, but AGMs have definitely been around much longer and have a longer track record of success. Now, a third benefit of AGM batteries is that you can get them in, hell, various different sizes and shapes to best suit your needs. So if you need a battery that's short and long, no problem. If a boxy and a chunky battery fits your needs a little bit better, hey, you can find it with the AGM. Now, one thing I have noticed here is over the course of the last couple of years here, we're seeing more size options and shape different, or I'm sorry, shapes with uh, lithium batteries as well. So something to keep in mind. And while there are plenty of benefits using AGM batteries, there are a few things that aren't so good about them. Now, one of the biggest disadvantages of an AGM battery is their depth of discharge. Now, depth of discharge refers to how much of the battery, how much of the power has been discharged relative to its overall capacity. Now, generally speaking, Many AGM batteries have a depth of discharge of just 50%, which means, hell, there's a lot of unusable power in the battery. Now, the depth of discharge is low on AGM batteries because they are extremely sensitive. The deeper the discharge, the less cycles the battery has in it. Thus, the rule of keeping your uh, depth of discharge to 50% at the most. Think of it like this. If you're hiking up a really steep mountain and you're taking small little baby steps this is going to save your legs from getting tired than if you take the biggest possible steps that you can. Similarly, if you discharge your AGM batteries in a very kind of small increments, it's going to help extend the life of the batteries much longer than if you take drain your battery each time that you use it. In fact, by avoiding a discharge of more than 50% each time that you use your AGM batteries and by topping off your batteries as 
quickly as possible, like for example, with Explore Solar Panel, you can triple the number of cycles that you get out of them, which is, hey, that's pretty cool. And actually speaking of uh, Explore Solar Panels, these things come in available in different sizes. You have a 105 watt, you have a 126, and you have a 180, which I say from experience with these panels will do the job very well. Now here's something that you can do. So if you have AGM batteries and to prevent the batteries from draining down, like for example, in my Turtleback, I have a 180 watt uh, Explore solar panel that's on the top of my, my tent. Then what I did was I felt a little quite crafty here a few months back and I took one of the, the 126 uh, watt Explore solar panels and I built a frame out of it. And so when I get to location, because let's face it, when you're going out camping, it's usually in your best interest to park your trailer in a shaded area. So therefore it's out of the sun, at least during the summer months here, because otherwise it'd be hot as hell in there. So what I have as a, when I get to location is I will launch the, the 126, the smaller solar panel, and I'm gonna put it directly into the, the sunlight. Now that has just like a 20 foot cable. So I'm able to put that and follow the sun wherever it is in the sky. By putting that out there, especially like if you have AGM batteries, that's going to keep, because let's face it, I think most of us probably use the majority of our electrical needs during at nighttime, with the exception of running the fridge during the day, if you have a fridge inside your, your rig. Um, so during the day, that thing is, whatever juice that I used up the night before, that is getting retopped off. So here we go, if you have AGMs, by having a good solar system, uh, system set up there, that's gonna keep that battery every day that you're out in the sun being topped off, topped off, topped off. So uh, I'll put a link, actually, I'll put a link uh, down below to the Explore uh, solar panels as well. Highly recommend these things. But the problem, getting back on topic here, the problem with not discharging your AGMs very far is that you have to add more batteries to get the capacity that you need. So if a AGM battery has 100 amp hours, you really only get 50 amp hours out of it. That means, well, you gotta add a second 100 amp hour battery to actually get or have 100 amp hours of juice at your disposal. Now, this brings us to the next disadvantage of AGM batteries. These things are not light by any means. And in an overlanding setup, a lot of weight is not something that you want to add to your rig. So if you plan to put two or three of these batteries into your trailer, for example, hell, that's 120 to 180 extra pounds or more into your trailer. That's a buttload of weight. All right, with AGMs out of the way, let's shift gears and talk about lithium batteries. Now, first, you may recall, I have two 100 amp hour Ultimatron lithium batteries in my Turtleback Expedition trailer. So we're gonna start off with talking about benefits. Now, as I pointed out earlier, the major disadvantage of AGMs are the depth of discharge and the stinking weight of these things. Now, the script of this is actually flipped when we're talking about lithium batteries, where AGMs might have 900 to 1,000 cycles in them if you keep them at 50% depth of discharge rule in mind. A lithium battery can give you about 5,000 cycles where discharging to only 50%. Now, I don't know about you, but 5,000 cycles would last me years and years of overlanding trips. Now, additionally, lithium batteries have a much deeper depth of discharge. In fact, you can run lithium batteries all the way down to zero and they will bounce back much better than an AGM will. Now, granted, you know, running your lithium batteries down to nothing each and every time, it's gonna cut the lifespan of these batteries. But still, if you consistently run the battery down, you can probably rely on the battery for at least a couple thousand cycles. And just like when I was talking about the AGM batteries, again, my setup with my Turtleback, I have 180 watts Explorer solar panel that's on the roof of the tent. Then I have 126, which is a portable unit that I'm going to put, I'm gonna chase the sun around my camp when I get the location. Between both of those, that keeps those my batteries really tip-topped in uh, fully charged status. So a big plus there when charging out in the field. And the power outlet of lithium batteries is also better than AGMs, which is going to be much more helpful for running larger amp drawing devices. So if you have electrical components in your rig that need a lot of power, lithium, my friends, is the way to go. Now regarding weight, lithium batteries are about half the weight as comparable to an AGM battery. That is a huge difference. Likewise, lithium batteries tend to have a smaller form factor than AGMs, so you can get really creative with where you're stuffing these things inside your rig or in your trailer. Now, the difference of weight of these things is due to the construction of the lithium batteries. 
Unlike AGMs, lithium batteries don't have a, just a ton of lead inside these things. Instead, they're filled with electrolyte liquid that is super lightweight. Now the weight savings is advantage to your vehicle as well. The less weight that you have on board, the less stress the vehicle and the components will experience as you're out on your adventures. And this reminds me of a segment in the video that we did two days ago or three days ago on the tailgater tire table. Um, one of the reasons in that video I was talking about you know, as overlanders, especially when we see gas prices continuously going up, but I was always, I'm always looking for ways to shave off weight without compromising. It's ex exactly what I said in this video. Finding ways of shaving weight without compromising the quality of being able to go out there and enjoy. When you can shave off, for example, half the weight through going with the lithium battery. So when I moved from the AGMs, let's say that are 120 pounds between both of them, down to 60 pounds, and actually these Ultimatron batteries here shave it down even further, but let's just round it off round numbers. That's 60 pounds savings there. The tailgater tire table, compared to the, the table that I was bringing out before, that's a difference of 20 pounds right there. There's 80 pounds, just two devices right there that I'm now saving. That's gonna make an impact on fuel costs and also wear and tear on my truck and my trailer as well bonus. Now, if you've ever shopped for lithium batteries, you know exactly where I'm going with this here, and they have a big price tag, whereas AGMs might cost a couple hundred bucks. Well, no, if you want a good quality AGM battery, you're going to spend upwards of about 500 bucks for one of these things. But compared to a lithium battery, that might run $1,500 or more, so there's a little price gap there. But there's more to that story than the initial expense. Now, as we discussed earlier, lithium batteries offer far more cycles than AGMs, so Let's say your lithium battery gives you 4,000 cycles over the course of its lifetime. Well, if an AGM is worth 1,000 cycles, well, heck, you're gonna need to buy four AGMs during that same time frame that you would need just one lithium battery. Additionally, since AGMs shouldn't be discharged more than 50%, that means you need to double up on the batteries to get the power that you need. So not only do you need to replace the AGMs more often, but you also need more AGMs to begin with. So. At the end of the day, AGMs really don't offer a budgetary advantage. Now, this really all depends on your setup. So if you're taking quick trips in a small trailer in a rooftop tent or your vehicle with a rooftop tent on the top of it, a single AGM battery might do everything that you need or very likely will do what you need. If you aren't running complex electrical components, there's potentially no sense, and I say potentially no sense, in spending thousands of dollars on lithium batteries when an AGM or two will do the job. And I think if you're going out like once or twice a year or just a few times a year, again, yeah, use the AGM. Um, or on the other side of it, you're just more, you know, you want something that's gonna be more future-proof, something that's gonna you know, last you a little bit longer. Again, the, the lithium, again, from a cost perspective, it really all depends on what you need. Lithium batteries are great for heavy power needs, extended periods of time. They do better with solar, but AGMs are just fine for short trips in light duty work. There. If you haven't noticed, I am, since I moved to lithium, I absolutely love these things. And so the, the Ultimate Tron batteries that I have as well, they have a amazing app that comes along with it. And that's actually one of the things I'll, I'll piggyback on this here. So one of the things I really, in my trailer, I have a Red Arc Manager 30, Red Vision. So from a high level view, I'm able to control and see all the electronics and what's happening from a power management standpoint inside my, my trailer. The Ultimatron has this amazing app that shows on a very granular basis the health and what's happening with the batteries. Uh, and on top of that, now this is the second set of uh, lithium batteries that I've had inside my trailer. The first ones weren't really geared for cold weather. These have heaters built inside them. So they're gonna behave a little better when we go off and doing our cold weather uh, little expedition. So, something else to add on the fire there. Again, this is just a high level view of AGM batteries and lithium batteries. I'm no battery expert by any means. So if you want more detailed information about how AGMs and lithium batteries are made and how they work, friend, go down in the description and check for links to a few resources. Now, of course, if you're a battery expert and you want to weigh in on AGMs versus lithium debate, by all means, do so in the comments down below. And friends, right about now is usually when we talk about our current giveaway, but that has ended, so 
You're going to have to want to tune into our next four wheel drive talk episode to see who won and the details for our next giveaway. All right, friends. And that is it. I hope you found some value with this video. If you did hit that like button, subscribe and hit that bell. So therefore YouTube notifies you every single time that we come out with a new video. That said, friends, I'm going to be turning off the camera. So you get out there, stay healthy and find your adventure.